Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the homeless and the poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Founder and pastor, Vince Rosada. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Ellis III, out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's service will be on the lack of knowledge. We're going to be talking about how God studies his word, how there's a three-phase study in God's word. We're also going to be looking at precept upon precept, line upon line, how God I got angry with these prophets and these priests who were getting drunk. So he decided to just say utter nonsense to them or babble, treat them like kids. But today, I just want you to get your Bible, your pen, and your paper and get ready for a mighty word from God. As I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless. Establish, building God and men and women of God. Let me decrease so that you may increase, and I ask you to increase these men and women. Because it's warm outside, a lot of folk ain't here, but they decided to be here for your word and your meal, spiritual and natural. So we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Let the house say amen. amen. Everybody take the Bibles. The Deuteronomy chapter 21. on this before here, but God's going to bring it back again. We're going to be talking about the lack of knowledge. Okay? We're going to be talking about the lack of knowledge. So Deuteronomy 21, because a lot of people fear knowledge, and they really don't have a healthy fear of God. They really don't. And we're going to see some examples in the Word of God of people who tried to mock us, <coughs> who did things in His presence, that were unhealthy and ungodly. And then God turned around and told him what he's going to do with them too. Amen? But then we're also going to talk about how to study your word. Okay? And what God requires to study your word. Deuteronomy 21, starting at verse 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son or daughter, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him or disciplined him, will not hearken unto him. That word hearken means listen. And it don't just mean listen, it means listen with an intent to change. I say that all the time. We just think it means listen. But if you ain't changing, you ain't listening. Amen. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, this is our son or daughter, is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he died. See, I think that phrase comes from, boy, I put you in this world, I'll take you out. Make another one look just like that. See, back then they could do that. You know, our kids today don't respect each other anymore. Back then, the kids would sleep with each other and go make another. Amen. And they will stone him with stones that he died, so shall thou put evil away from among you, and all of Israel shall hear and fear. Amen? Amen. I don't think too much explanation for that. Go to Isaiah 28. I got a lot of scriptures, so I ain't going to stick around trying to break things down. Some of the stuff y'all heard me say before. One of my arguments with God is, God, why can't I keep the peace myself? It's my word. Amen? It's his word. That's just it. And this ain't a place where you're not here for theology school anyway. You're here to get out of sin. You're here to get your life together. You're here to hopefully be convicted and repented and turn your life over to Jesus Christ. And as I always say, I'm a minister that deals with issues and addictions. That's why I'm always going through the same old thing. Teaching the same old lessons. Because no matter how many people come and go out of here, some people have heard it, some people haven't. And they still need to hear that God still loves you despite you. Because he expects you to get it right. He expects you to change. No change, and you will remain the same. You're desolate. All right? You don't want to be desolate no more, do you? I haven't said a verse yet, ma'am. Chapter 28, Isaiah 28. 
verses 1 to 3 first. Woe, <clears throat> woe to the crown of pride. That word woe means judgment to those who are private. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are in the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. I'm going to tell you, go get another version and read this and watch it blow your mind. Watch it blow your mind. I had to study this. Verse 2. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, which has a tempest of hell and destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet. Now jump down to verse 7. But they also have erred through what? Wine. Another translation said beer. It even said beer. How many of y'all got that in your body? If you read that out here or something like that, it might even say beer. Amen. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priests and the prophets have erred through strong drink. Even the preachers are drinking and the prophets are drinking. Getting drunk. <laughs> they are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way from strong drink. They are in vision. How you want to tell somebody or teach somebody something you drunk? Yeah, Come on. Yeah, let me say, man. I don't know what that's all. Now, that ain't just a drunk on alcohol. I believe this is a drunk person on themselves. Hello. They know more than you, always do. They don't even recognize their own condition because they're drunk on themselves. If you got that much wisdom, why you here? Because you're still stabbing about on your own self. Pride. Crown of pride. Amen. But they also err on strong drink, and though strong drink are the way of the priests and the prophets, have they erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. Can't tell you nothing. Verse 8. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Yeah, they go spit them all over the place. We used to call it early back in the just spit it out. That's a look at him. Now, he's just talking about the people. He's talking about his prophets and his priests. Actually, you need to thank my wife for this verse because she said, Honey, what does uh, precept upon precept and line upon line mean? And then, you know, I thought to myself, Well, that, maybe that's God telling us to get get the word together and line up the word right. You know, I'm pretty sure she got to go Then I'm not going to fall. Wait till you see what I found out. Verse 9. <laughs> Whom shall you teach knowledge? Who that drunk gonna teach? Would y'all be in mind if I stayed up here drunk? Yeah. Maybe some of you would. I don't know. I know I ain't gonna pay no attention. Even if I was drunk, I ain't listening to you because you're drunk. Can you teach me? Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Hmm. That them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precepts. Now that, that confused me the other night when I was studying. Precept upon precept. Then he says, precept upon precept again. But we're talking King James language, okay? And then the Hebrew brings out something different. I'm going to break it down for you. All right? Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. Now what is God saying there? Precept upon precept means this. The first portion of that means this. Letter upon letter. The second portion of precept upon precept means line upon line. Then it goes line upon line. But that line upon line means lesson upon lesson. So he said to you, letter upon letter, line upon line, and lesson upon lesson. Now remember you're talking to a bunch of drunken, vomit love people. They're talking to his priest. Then he says, stammering lips. So God said, I'm going to talk to you the same way, like a child. 
I'm going to make everything I say to you, you priests and you so-called prophets who know it all, everything I say to you is going to have utter nonsense. That's what he means. God is speaking to the left. Da, 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 da. When I read it in the, um, what was it? It was on the message file. And all I said was da, 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 da. Little children, little boy. So God is saying, because you want to act that way, I ain't never speaking to you correctly. Whoa. Whoa. Da, 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 da. Drunken fool, you. I thought it meant, you know, get his intelligence. But God said, I'm going to speak to you like a little boy, no matter how old you are. Like a little girl, no matter how old you are. You will never understand my word. Do y'all want God to talk to you that way? No. No. Amen. That's why he said in verse 11, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. Stammering lips. Verse 12, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was upon them. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go. <laughs> that they might go and fall backwards and be broken and snared and taken. <laughs> because you ain't listening. You ain't listening. So you're going to fall backwards, be broken, and snared. Oh, oh that was the Lord. No, it wasn't. Because all he said was, dad, 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 dad. <laughs> But you a drunken prophet. You a drunken teacher. Because you're drunk on yourself. When you decide to stay in your condition, you are drunk on yourself. You are your own God. Blah, 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 da, da, da. Amen. Y'all like that? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. Wherefore, hear the Lord, hear, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men that rule this people which are in Jerusalem. So he say you scornful, being a prophet and a priest, trying to teach my people drunk. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death. Oh. And with hell are we in that agreement. So you agree with death and hell when you stay in your condition. Amen. Mm. Hello. Mm. Mm. When the overflowing sword shall pass through, in other words, he's going to allow other people take rule over you or other countries. Back then, he's going to let other countries come in there and with your tail. Mm. Amen. It shall not come under us, for we have made lies. Our <laughs> we believe a lie more than we believe the truth. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. We will cover ourselves in a lie. Can't, no truth is in you. Can't never come out. You know? All you want to do is promote self. And then you think everybody's supposed to agree with that mess you don't. I'm sorry. It ain't going to work. We long suffer, but we don't agree. There's a difference between long suffering and grief. See, friendship is a place where they long suffer. You know, the places I come out of, Team Challenge and other places like that, they'll give you a little while, then they kick you out. But this door is always open, because it's open for the grace of God to you. Amen. Amen. It's about long suffering. Amen. But you think they owe you something. Don't nobody owe you nothing. Don't nobody owe you nothing. Jesus already paid for it. Amen. And, and you don't even respect the fact that Jesus already paid for it. Go to verse 16. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious quarter stone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall make haste. Amen. Amen. Who's that foundation, y'all? Jesus. Jesus. And his word. Amen. And his word. Go to Proverbs chapter 1. See, the problem here is y'all don't have a healthy fear of God. I said this before. Most of you believe fear only means reverence of the Lord. But there's a lot of places in the Bible where God said, I'm going to send you to hell. You need to tremble. Don't you even say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? But we don't tremble at God. We don't even believe he has the power to send us to hell because we're walking in this flesh. See, that ought to scare you enough right there. God has the power to send me to hell. Even Jesus told us. Fear him who has the power to send you to hell. I'm sure he didn't say reverence him. He said, triple like the fact that God can send you to hell. Amen. But we ain't scared of God. That's a shame. I'm scared of the Lord. I fear God. But I also love him because I know he loves you. 
See? Proverbs 1. But watch what he says about those who don't fear him. Proverbs 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Go to verse 22. How long, you simple ones, will you love simpleness or simplicity? How long are you going to be stupid? How long are you going to sit on silly, waiting on dumb? How long, you simple ones? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof, or, you know, turn you at my shame. Behold, I will pour out my spirit of you. Now, this ain't, this ain't him trying to give you. This ain't him blessing you. He's going to pour out his spirit of wrath on you. Amen. I will make known my words unto you. He ain't trying to give you no revelation. He ain't ready to whip your tail. Let's keep reading. Verse 24. Because I have called, you refuse. Friendship is the Lord. Hello. You refuse. Teacher after teacher come here and say, friendship, get saved. You refuse. Friendship, change. You refuse. Mm -hmm. Then you expect a blessing? He been calling you for I don't know how long. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because I have called and you refuse, I have stretched out my hand and no man regard. In other words, you snapped it away. Yes, sir. Right. Here I am. I love you, friendship. I don't want it, God. <laughs> as soon as you get in trouble, go. Verse 25. But you have said at nothing on my counsel. I tried to warn you. I tried to talk to you. I tried to give you wisdom. I tried to point you in the right direction. But guess what? You didn't want my counsel. And you have none of my reproof. You didn't want none of my correction. Hello. Watch what you're going to do. Because you didn't want my counsel or my correction, I also will laugh. Now we're talking about being okay. Now, that word knowledge don't mean 
intellect neither. Right. You hated the strength and wisdom and fear of the Lord. Because he said, the beginning of fear is, I mean, fear is the beginning of knowledge, right? Yeah. And that what we just read? Right. They got nothing to do with your intellect. Because your intellect is what turns you the way you are. Well, I know about God. I can still drink his beer. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Amen. Uh, when you're fit, no, let me go back. What am I at, 29? Yes. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the what? Fear of the Lord. I'm going to laugh at you. Now, go to Hosea 4. Hosea 4. <laughs> Now that was just the beginning and the foundation. Do I got your ears to those who are ready to fear God? I hope so. Do I got one person here? Amen. Because all it takes is one, and all the angels will rejoice in heaven. Hosea chapter 4. Look at verse 6. Familiar scripture. 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. Mm. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget your children. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. That's hard, isn't it? Go to Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5. Hosea, that was Hosea 4 to 6. Isaiah 5. Look at verse 13 to 15. Now every time you see the Bible, therefore, wherefore, you know that's because of the result of what he just got finished talking about. So therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are fashed, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp of pride, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. God will break it. Amen? But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, fear of God, the wisdom of God, the instructions of God, the discipline of God. Amen? Amen. Not the intellect of God. Because when you got humility, when you got uh, compassion, you are walking in the intellect of God. Hey. Mm. Mm. See, we hear a lot of people tell us, how many of you know that God will never leave you over Amen. Amen. That's what scripture says, right? Yeah. In the New Testament, right? Yeah. God will never leave you, nor forsake you. I'm getting ready to show you he will. Woo! You weren't expecting that, were you? God will leave you and forsake you. Mm, I don't even know, sister. Go to um, Second Chronicles. Yeah, I was going to say, Warren, that's the Old Testament. It sure is. But guess what? In the New Testament, he didn't leave you, you left him. Amen. He didn't forsake you, you forsake him. Amen. Amen. So he sits back and laughs. Second Chronicles 15. That's why it says no man can pluck you out of my hand. But he never said you couldn't jump out. Amen. You jump out of that hand every day. Yes, Even a preacher jumps out from time to time. But I crawl my way back in. Quick. That's what grace is about. I can climb back in there. Second Chronicles 15, verse 2. Second Chronicles 15, 2. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will do what? He will forsake you. Amen. Hello. First Chronicles 28, right in the back. Chapter in the back, 28. <laughs> First Chronicles 28. 
Don't even make that. 